Hannah sat quietly in her chair, picking at a loose thread on her shirt cuff. Derek felt uncomfortable. He had become accustomed to not asking personal questions of those he met. In the past year, the only ones he came in contact with, other than his own men, were those running from the government. If he cared about those he had to pick up, he couldn't have done his job. To ask questions of them would have led him to become personally involved and would have driven him to his breaking point far sooner. But something about this young woman intrigued him. He sat on the edge of one of the tattered chairs. How did you lose your leg? He asked her. She pressed her lips together and looked away. I'm sorry, he said. It's none of my business. A long minute passed in silence. Car wreck, three years ago. Ben, that's my, her gaze dropped to the floor, was my husband. She wrung her hands. Ben and I were hit by a teenage speeding. My leg was badly injured, and that new health care system wouldn't pay for the half dozen operations I needed. We couldn't afford them, so they cut it off. That sucks was all Derek could think of to say. She picked at the thread on her sleeve again. Derek glanced around the room, not knowing what else to do. We had a good life together, she finally said. Then Ben got sick, and we moved in here so Dee could help me care for him. Then he died. She rested her hands on the, ar the armrests of her wheelchair and didn't say anything for several seconds. So, Derek, is it? He nodded. What brings you to these parts? Fear bubbled in him. What would be the best way to handle that question? Just passing through. To where? Should he tell her the truth or a lie? Mexico, the truth. From Virginia, a lie. But better than telling her the truth and let her draw conclusions based on his fatigues and the equipment he carried. She sighed and her expression told him that she wanted more than his clipped answers. I'm tired of the way things are going. I'm just trying to make it there and start a new life. She nodded and seemed to relax a bit. Well, the way things are these days, I can certainly understand that. But do you really think it'll be any better? Probably not, but I always wanted to go there, and this seemed the perfect time. Married? Derek saw hope in her eyes. A shiver crawled up her spine. She wanted out of here and must think that he was the perfect way. No, never really wanted that. Too selfish, I think. Selfish? You stopped and helped Alvin when you could have just gone on your way. Well, I didn't have much of a choice. He stuck a gun to my head when he caught me trying to steal the horse. Alvin and Dee shuffled back into the room carrying four dirty-looking glasses of what looked like water. Derek stood and glanced over his shoulder at the open door and then back to the old man. I really need to get moving again. The old man's expression changed from hope to desperation. Derek knew Alvin would have preferred that Derek stay here with them. Alvin nodded. A moment later, his brow shot up and a smile covered his face. Wait, he set the glasses down on the small table and held his hands out. I have something you may be able to use. He nudged Derek toward the chair and Derek sat back down. Please wait. I'll be right back. The old man hobbled from the room, followed by Dee. When they disappeared, Hannah, Hannah rolled herself closer to Derek and placed her hand on his. Kill me. There were tears in her eyes. Alvin and Dee, too. Derek yanked his hand from under hers. What? She wiped her tears with her tattered shirt tail and stared at him. We have almost no food. There's no clean water. She peeked over her shoulder toward the door the old couple had left through. We don't have much time left. She leaned forward and whispered, We'll only suffer as we starve. None of us has the ability to bury the other two. Her teary gaze bored into Derek's. Please send us to heaven to be with Ben. I can't live like this any longer. Derek stood and stared at her, not believing what she was asking of him. Please, the only gun left is the rifle Alvin carries, and there are no bullets left. Tears streamed down her face. Derek stared into her hopeful gaze. He felt sick. Please, she whispered. I can't murder. It won't be murder. Her sorrowful eyes blinked once and she stared at him fixedly. I want to die. 
please. Their gazes remained locked for what seemed to be an eternity. He wondered what hell these people had been through. The faces of hundreds of people he caught and transported to the internment camps flooded through his mind. A band tightened around his heart and he felt like he couldn't breathe. Please. He felt his hand move to his holster. It shook as he released the snap and pulled his sidearm out. Alvin hurried through the doorway, a bundle cradled in his arms and a smile on his face. His gaze dropped to Derek's hand, then rose to meet Derek's stare. Alvin's expression changed to one of sorrow.